Hello and welcome to the Car Care channel and welcome to this beautiful 2008 Toyota Camry. The owner of this car have had it for a long time and they have two things that brought them in the shop. One of them is severe vibration. You're in drive, the whole car just shakes. So we looked into it and motor mounts, they're original. This engine was actually rebuilt, this is a 2AZ car. Engine was, I think short block was replaced on this long time ago. So we're good with that. Car is actually in great shape otherwise. We also noticed a rusty power steering line. It's about to rupture. So in this video, let's tackle these concerns. If you are DIYing this, you'll learn how to do the power steering return line, upper and lower, all motor mounts, and life will be wonderful after that. Let's get started. All right, did you know that this today is a special occasion, at least to me? I hope you guys too feel the same way. It's the first repair video we filmed in the new, in the new area of the shop, the area that's dedicated to filming. So, really excited for that. Let's hope we don't make a giant mess. Well, we're gonna make a mess, but just hope not a big enough mess. All right, that's the hope. Let's get the engine cover off. I mean, technically, you don't need to, but I'm going to need to clean it anyways. So, might as well. So, I'm going to get this mount out. I'm going to take a close look at it. This one is, yeah, I've seen better. I have seen better days, but I'm going to take a close, close look at it. So here's that mount. See that? All this mount does is just hold the motor motion back and forth. So when it has this, that's not good. That means it's not holding anymore. I'm going to compare it to the new one in a bit. Now we're also doing this return line right here in the lower one. We're not doing that right... Uh-oh. Not this exact moment, but I'm going to remove these two and make life easier. Little support bracket and the little bracket on the side. All right, we are all ready. Before we lift it up, though, I want to take one thing out. So we're going to remove this bolt, which is for the front mount while we're here. Now, I would have used an impact on this, but I have a small confession to make. We don't have airlines run into this part of the shop yet, so uh, we're going to be doing some manual labor today. There's that bolt. Alright, let's lift the car and get it ready. We don't have air. I wonder if this works. This was it. Cut that part in the editing, please. We got some electric air. Let's take this cover off. Does this cover has a side clip? I'm about to find out. I have a feeling it doesn't. No, it does not, of course. Let's lift the car before we get the mount. We'll get some of the covers, we'll get the bolts from the bottom, and then we'll continue. These little panels, I remember doing the PDI on these cars. That's pre-delivery service when they're new. I like to install that piece. These are installed in the, in the proper orientation, which is nice. We got some uh, these push clips. I don't like them very much, but they work. They may work until you have to remove them. Just now, give it a break. 
Let's see. Oh no, this one looks like it was recently installed. Yeah, that's why it came out. How about this one? Oh, these are very fresh. I think we're good to reuse them. Not my favorite type of clip, but if they're not breaking their holes, that's the whole point. Okay, let's see. These covers are here, so that's nice. It's just what covers the bolts. This one's always not there from the factory because you have the big cover that covers it. This car looks like it had some kind of coating, thrust coating, which is nice. Every single Toyota, this size, 17. Now when we're flying in, that one that went flying in was flying because of this one. I don't recall now. I don't remember now if it was this one or this one. I think it was this one. Or did it fly too? Thought I saw it at the edge. Oh, there you are. There it is. Front one's always 14. If you're from the south or California or somewhere, welcome to Rusty Land. And this is not even the worst Rusty Land has to offer. It's, well, the car is not bad at all. I'm just about to say, spoke too soon. Okay, I think we got this. Now we're going to lower the car, loosen this mount from the top, lift the motor up, get the mount, get the new mount, same thing here. I think once we do this, this one will be high enough I think a transmission one though, when we lift the transmission to get the mount on the side, this should be lifted and we'll be able to get it out and get the new one in, theoretically. So let's find out. Let's get this nut off. Sometimes when you remove this nut, it comes with a stud, which would make this a little nicer. It's not bad on the 2AZ. Not bad at all. There goes that one. There's the other mount. We already took the wheel off camera here. Let's see, this one comes with a stud. No. Nope. This one will make life easier if it comes with a stud, but we'll get it. You don't absolutely have to remove this cover, but I'm gonna. Just makes life easier. Let me try to get this clip because this side is on there. There we go. Here's that little push clip. Our cover. So we're going to use a, a jack stand with a block of wood on the oil pan right by, a little bit by the drain plug area. That's the strongest area of the pan. Lift up. See where that mount is coming up. Now we're going to need to release the mount in order to release it. Well, we're going to have to do some negotiations. You're going to come out. There you go. See how these negotiations work? They work very well. Now I'm going to need to lift it until it clears the mount. Just right there. And we're stuck on the power steering line, Ooh, which is ready to break. Let's 
show you why we're replacing this other line. Here goes the mount. See how this mount completely collapsed down and this one's standing up? And then I'm gonna do something else. This one I can move it with my hand, push it. It's completely gone. This one, I can barely do anything with it. So that's what happens to these. They just collapse over time, carrying all this weight for years and years. Let's get the new mount in. Although this would be a good time to get the other power steering line, which is this one, which we are replacing. I'm just going to put the mounts. I don't like to keep this engine hanging like that for long. Yep. This one is sitting down. Install the 19 on top. So now it doesn't fight us at all. Find my wrench here. There we go. That's good. Let's go do the other one. Let's do the same on this side for this mount. Same thing right by the drain plug. Lift it up. We have lift off. Do we have lift off on the front one? Yes, we do. Front one. There we go, front one already came out. So we're gonna do some uh, negotiating again. But this time, we gotta be a little careful because this is aluminum and that's part of the transmission. I'm trying to find a good angle without blocking your view. There it is. Gonna lift it up some more. Almost there. There it is. This one is not terrible. But still, if you want this car to drive like new, always replace all four. That is the one recommendation I'll give you. These are all these mounts are original. This car has right around Oh, the way see this one doesn't want to go in, which means that other mount was collapsed. There we go. But the recommendation is you always replace all four. But before we get carried away, gotta replace that front one. Let's see if we can get this mount out. And I only see one issue. We're gonna be able to get this out of here. Oh, it'll be easier out of the top. Ish. That's the only problem I see is getting the actual mount out. Is it going to be tricky? I'll turn it upside down. See if we can give birth to it somehow. folks you know what I'm thinking I'm thinking let's remove these three and then we'll lower the car get the mount out get the mount in I think the two mounts will hold it will be a little sagging this way but I think that should be enough might be a little extension Goes that bracket. Let me lower the whole thing and just see how it wants to sit without the front mount. If I don't like it, we don't have to. I think that's good. You can lower the car, set the mount. go from there. So I'm going to remove this just to give us better access. Just hope these don't break. No, they are cooperating today. It's very good. 
So I actually got a block of wood underneath the car so we can lift it up and just get it done from here. I don't keep going back and forth, back and forth. So I'm going to lower the car just enough to lift up the power train. That should be enough. Let's see if I can get old mounts out. There it is. This was a V6. That will never happen. Because it's not a V6, this does happen. This mount, yeah, this does have movement. A lot of movement. Let me try to get the new one here. This barely has any movement. So this one is completely different this story with this one, like the transmission one. So, set this down. That is not the correct orientation. There it is. That is the correct orientation. So the way you know the orientation, I just looked at this bracket. It was facing this way. So that is your correct orientation. Or you can actually use the dot. The dot faces the front of the car. Not always, that's why I don't usually use the dot. But here's what we're gonna do. We're actually gonna move this a little bit to the side because we gotta put the other bracket on. And we're gonna be able to with the thing up to here. Ah, kinda sorta. That's better. I don't think we're gonna have to move it. Yeah, I'm gonna have to lift up this engine a little bit more. That is much better. Yes. This gives us all the room in the world. And now when we lower it down, we gotta watch our transmission mount, because now it's off the stud. So when we lower it down, kind of make sure we line it up. Okay, the head is good. Just came out of the spots. Now, let's sit the mount in its final place. And we will very carefully raise the car up. Engine transmission mount is still good. I'm just going to raise the car up, which will lower the engine down. Or the powertrain down. Just trying to make sure we end up lining up here, which we already are not. So what I'm going to do... I'm going to start this bolt. If this bolt starts, then it will line it up. It's starting a little tight because... Hmm, I don't like this. Let me raise it up a little bit and see if it wants to sit down. If not, we'll just reposition it from underneath. Yeah, it doesn't want to sit down. So, we're going to raise the car up, get underneath it, just put the jack stand just to get the load off of this one, position it, sit it down, and we're good. Very important that you position these mounts, because if you don't, the powertrain will be sitting sideways, and you won't notice it, and then you'll have all kinds of shaking, and we're back to square one. So I'm going to lift up the powertrain just a little bit, stick the tension off this front mount, They should already be. Yes. Sitting down, our bolt is turning. This bolt doesn't want to go very smoothly, but it is seated, and that's really what I'm interested in. Let it sit down. That's it. We're good. Now let's basically put everything back together. Let's put all our Nuts back. Let's 
still have to put the top nut on this side. Covers are actually very important, folks. They, they keep water from getting inside the subframe. Now the front ones don't have a cover because they are covered by the big cover. That's why they don't. And the last thing I'm gonna do here is put the nut over the side mount for the transmission. And we're pretty much done with this. Okay. That is all done. Well, before we uh, wrap this up, I think it, it has come the time to do the power steering lines. So I'm gonna take this off. You don't have to, but I usually do because it gets oil all over here and then you can't get it off. And to me, that is worth it. Oop, that was a mistake. There it is. So the line we are replacing is actually this one. See how rusty that is? I, that is one hit away from just started leaking and they're very common to leak there. And the upper return line is also common to leak. So we're gonna start down here. This actually drains some of your fluid at least on the return side and that's where we are working so i'm gonna get this clamp out let's see if this line breaks when we do this oh no it's holding because this hose is all worn there goes your power steering fluid actually clean which is nice so we're gonna let this power steering drain while we get there is a 10 right here there's a 10 in the back so let's start getting some of these out get in here there's that one is it gonna cooperate Probably not. We're asking a old bolt and rusty land to cooperate. That usually never happens. No, oh, it's actually cooperating. That's pretty nice. So now the other side of this line has a 10 millimeter right here and then it connects up here. That's the return line, which that other line goes directly to the rack. So, let's get our 10 millimeter here. See if this one cooperates like the other one. Once I get to it. It came right out. Perfect. Oh, the other one is still dribbling. And we just got this new shop. We're trying not to make a mess which the mess is inevitable. You know, when you get a new car, you try your absolute best not to get it dirty, and you're like doing all these things, and then after, oop, there we go, there it is that. After like six months, it's okay when the first stain happens, and the first sandwich is eaten, and then everything just kind of goes downhill from there. We're trying to do the same thing with the new shop, so. I know this job makes a huge mess, so trying to keep things as clean as possible. There goes that. Kind of what we did before in, in the home garage. We tried to keep things as clean as possible because uh, this car care not would get upset at us if we make a giant mess. So in order to contain the mess of this line once it comes out, you see it's still has all kinds of fluid and I'm gonna put a bolt and bring the clamp to get my plier. And I already capped the other side so we should be good. This end is good. 
we are trying to make not a single trip that's the goal here it never happens but at least we tried now there is the matter of getting this line out which uh, sometimes is easier said than done and this one being a four cylinder is probably the easiest one. There is not really one way to do this. In this particular one, this is the better way. If you have a V6, this is not the better way because you can't do this with it. But here's the line. Here's this end that I always tell you, look at that. That is about to go. And when these things go, they just leak a lot. And the pump starts whining and we're done. So this line is out. Let's go get the new one. Here's the new line. This is the other end of it. So I'll tell you a small story as we put this line in. One time I had a customer come in the shop and they had one of these lines leaking. And you know what he told me? He's like, well, why can't you make this line out of, you know, just flux, like, well, I don't remember what he called it, but like one of these, like kind of like a brake line, make the, make your own one. So. I tell him, sir, I can, but the labor involved in doing that and taking the old line and buying the line and then forming it to place and all this, that's, that's time that I will charge you for. And what is the end objective? He's like, no, we just want to, we don't want to just replace parts because I don't want to have a parts replacer work on my car. I tell him, well, sir, Here's, here's, let's do a simple math. The same thing with this car, this car is an 08. This is the original line we're replacing. Let's do the math here. This line is right around $130 MSRP. By the time we charge you labor to do the line, you already paid for the brand new line that is properly coded that lasted all this time in this car. So this is something I will tell you because I see this a lot. Mechanics will see this line leaking at the end and they'll just cut the line and put a little piece of hose. You know, there is nothing that will make your Toyota not a Toyota other than doing that. Folks, try not to do this stuff like that because fix your car properly, put the proper lines, buy them original, especially in the case of Toyota. Other manufacturers, I don't know, some of them are good. Some of them, their original parts are actually worse than aftermarket. But when it comes to Toyotas, use original parts and do, do the math. Uh, this part has lasted all these years. I guess it's good. You should always do the math as the part you're replacing. How old is it? If, it if the original lasted this long until it rusted, you possibly will want to keep that original part for the same amount of time and just do the replacement right. And then I see the other thing that I really dislike. Some mechanics will get the original parts, but then they will forget about these little clamps and then they'll put a warm clamp and they will leak and then we'll have problems and then the hose will get damaged and it's like why can't we just get these new clamps or even acceptable just use the old clamps i mean these are tension clamps they do lose their tension over time but we're talking 20 years before that happens so that's some of the things i want to share with you about jobs like this if you're going to do it do it right do it once and be done with it I mean, there's no heroism in mending something. If, if you can fix a part properly, that is fine. But mending it for the sake of mending it is not good. Now, if the budget is tight, I understand. But if the budget is not tight, then just fix it right. Especially when it comes to Toyotas. So this part of the journey is over. Now I think we're going to lower this car, get the top line in, and then uh, put all the covers. I'm going to probably continue cleaning this for an eternity because I don't want drips on the new floor. At least not the first time we work on it. So this is the upper return line. The easiest way to get it because it wraps around this, this AC line. There's a clamp here or a clip 
for the for the AC line that you push on it. And of course, this one doesn't want to go. Do you want to go to that or no? Oh, there it is. Okay, maybe not. Maybe not today. Oh, there we go. This l loosens this this AC line a little bit, which will make your life much easier. So, of course, somebody tried to repair this because it was leaking with a yeah with an offender. I read these these clamps, folks, and regardless what anybody says, and that's okay. That's what the comments are for. These belong to garden hoses, not cars, and definitely not Toyotas. So we're gonna take this clamp off and the reason this this hose actually leaks is that the hose itself gets brittle so when you put that clamp it's it's a patch I'm gonna get a bolt just to cap this line from making a mess I already capped the bottom so when we remove it it's not spraying all over the place making a bigger mess now this line has two 10 millimeter bolts. One of them is right here. Of course my magnetic socket doesn't work anymore because the magnet gets stuck and they're on back order. It's like everything else. If I push it, it'll work. But as soon as you push on it a little bit, it goes in and doesn't come out. So here's the uh, dance of this line, I call it. You're going to pull the line up. Just careful with all the AC lines. And kind of walk it past the compressor. This. There it is. That's the line. And when you cap both ends, you have no spillage. Everything is good. Now this line, the line itself, there's nothing wrong with it. These hoses are brittle and that's why they're leaking. They don't sell them separate and just replace the whole line. And again, can you get a piece of hose and put it on? Yes. Is that hose gonna leak? Yes because Toyota loves to use these strange hose sizes that you'll never get them right then you have to put a warm clamp again we're not fixing some unreliable car here this is the original line replace it properly and you won't have to look at it for years to come so here's here's a new line you can install it by the same way kind of go in first put this clamp to the side I put this backwards. This has to go here, right next to the ABS actuator here. Once you get your hose down, there you go. I'm lock it just like we did the other one. That's it. This is sitting in the right position now. And it's properly on because I've seen these people bend the line and wrap it on top it's not it's not the right way to put it but this is now good I'm gonna put our bolts back if our magnetic socket cooperates I don't think it will world we live in everything's on back order it's not just car parts they are all on back order not all but a lot of seriously important parts are on back order is really creating unique situations here's that now new clamp always replace these yes you can re reuse the old ones but do this right that way you, know, you never have to do the job once fix it right and be done put new clamps they're a few bucks and that's done we're gonna lift the car up i'm gonna basically just hook up the other side put all the cover put everything back together so i'm gonna time lapse you through all that
Ya estamos. So now that we're all set, we're going to bleed the power steering fluid. We've talked about this before in another video, but don't put fluid and then start the car and let the pump whine, keep turning the wheel until it's quiet. You'll see a lot of people do that. Problem with that is you just replace the leaking line or the potentially leaking line to save the power steering pump and then to bleed it, you took half the life of that pump. Don't do that. You can actually bleed it with the car off. So we're going to fill up our fluid here. I have a little bit of leftover from the previous job I just did this morning. So we're going to fill our reservoir until it's to the full hot. It's actually, I see it bubbling. Yeah, I think we stopped. So Jose is actually sitting in the car. He's going to be turning the wheel lock to lock, medium speed, as the air approaches out. So go ahead, Jose. There you go. See that? I will put my hand here just so we wouldn't splash. I'm going to get you a really close shot of that reservoir so you can see what's going on. So did you see how the fluid dropped from, and you see those bubble, those micro bubbles? They're going to keep going. But we were at hot, now we're at low, and it's actually dropping even more as just we sit as the air comes out. So we're going to top it off again to full hot. I'm going to just put my reservoir here so in case we make a mess. Jose, go ahead and turn the steering wheel. Watch what happens. See that boiling? You can actually hear it. Watch the level drop. See how it's dropping? That's the air coming out and the fluid replacing it. So we're gonna, this time, since we got some of it out, we don't wanna go to the hot anymore. Just initially. Turn the steering wheel, Jose. Sometimes you get fluid splatter like we did right now. See how it's still dropping? I'm going to top it off again. This time we're going to start going to the cold mark. Here, just below it. Go ahead, Jose. See how it comes up? Then it comes down. Folks, that is actually normal for power steering systems when they're off, when you turn the wheel. That's why if you have it overfilled, it'll just overflow if you turn the wheel of the car off. But I think we're getting really close. You see how the level keeps dropping? But eventually, you get to a point where it goes up, but when it comes down, it comes down to the same spot. So go ahead, Jose, turn the wheel lock to lock one more time. You can even see the bubbles. I don't see any more bubbles. I think one more time and we'll do it. Let's see. Do it one more time. I don't hear bubbles anymore, folks. So this is properly bled. So sometimes when you start it, the fluid level will drop slightly. Like it dropped right down just a hair. It'll drop slightly, but the pump will not make any noise. And that's the whole point. 
And this system, let's try it one last time for good measure. Let's see if it dropped. I hear some bubbles, but that might be just a normal operation. That definitely dropped. See, those last bubbles are really difficult to get. That's why you, you when you start it, it'll drop a little bit, and then that's it. Do it again. Of course, we have the wheels off the ground. That's how Jose is able to turn it very quick. You could just use a jack and some jack stands to keep the front wheels off the ground. This time, it didn't drop at all. I think we're good. Straighten your wheel, Jose. We're good. So we're going to get our last mount here. First, we got to put this bracket on. This is actually the bolt for the other mount. Because this one comes with the new bolt in the middle, so we'll save that bolt for a rainy day. All right, well that side is done. We have a couple more things to do. We still have to tighten this bolt. That's done. And last but not least. Okay, I lied. There is one more thing. Okay, that's much better. Is it? Much better. Now the job is complete. And that is one more job done. Folks, before we wrap up the video, I want to tell you something. Now that we got this space, this is the first time we film here, we're all freaking out about not getting the floor dirty. It'll eventually get dirty, and that's okay. We'll just clean it, keep things going. But me and Jose have talked about this, and we have a plan. If the Lord approves of it, we will go with it. We are always fixing cars. That's what I do from 9 to 6, basically. And the guys in the shop, same thing. We have a plan of just start filming repairs. Now, it will not be the kind of slow going repair like we did here, where I'm explaining things and kind of helping you along. It'll just be kind of, we're going through the job at our normal pace, not stopping, not going over every different scenario of every possible repair scenario that we're going through, just for you guys to see more repair happen. Because some certain repairs like, we cannot really film them because of time restraints, customer needs the car back, but if we just, as I go through the job, we film it. If you guys are interested in that, please leave it in the comments so we know and we act on it. We start filming videos like this, which is a kind of a different thing. We've done a few videos like that, but not a lot. Folks, I hope this video was helpful and informative. I hope you learned something new. If you like it, consider giving it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing to the channel. Check out some of my other videos. Until the next video, folks, may the Lord bless you and keep you. And you have yourself a wonderful day.